is Jamal Berger. I am the co-founder of Tier Zero, a creative agency with the ability to follow through on production. And I'm also the co-founder of Kickback, a nonprofit organization that empowers youth to think outside of their lived experience one soul at a time. I'm Charlie Lindsay. I'm a co-founder, director, and photographer at Tier Zero. I'm also a member of the Kickback. In communities that need the most support, why do you think shoes resonate so much? I'm not sure if the case for you, but for me, I would miss basketball practice or I'd skip out on an opportunity to just like work on my game because I actually needed to go steal some shit so that I could sell something mm -hmm. just so that I could go get some shoes to then show up to practice yeah, or yeah. to show up to something. So I, in the process of making sure that I could show up to school with the things that most kids had, I had to miss out on various opportunities to like work on what I needed to work on in order to like, you know, stay afloat, stay at the same level as others. So for me, sneakers kind of hit home when, you know, me and you like starting to shoot and see the world move around and brands are sending us sneakers and I'm like, yo, like kids are dying over these things. You know, kids are losing every, they're losing out on the opportunity to just focus. You know, and they put themselves in harm's way as a result. So for me, it was just, just like sneakers are a big part of my identity. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to get every kid, but I know that they're a big piece of identity for other people. Somebody said to me the other day, they're kind of like this like symbol of resilience. I thought that was really interesting. So for me, um, sneakers just became like this important piece because I think that even when I started to look back, and really think about what I and some of our friends, you know, that are here, aren't here today, um, went through just to be able to show up and present themselves as if they were like on an equal playing field. What they went through, the harm they put themselves in and the habits they developed just to play mm -hmm. and be kids, it's kind of fucked up, you know, it's messed up. So. That's why it's so important to me. And it also, just because I know so much about them, it allows me to connect with kids today because as unfortunate as it sounds, the same problems still exist. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's so wild because like that influencer culture, when, you know, when we used to just get bare shoes, like growing up, that was like, it was like a dream, you know? Like I can't yeah. believe we're getting free, free Nikes, like free, free whatever, free any type of shoes. And the fact that, yeah, you were able to like not be, not be greedy with it, and just be like, "Yo, this, this, um, I actually don't need forty pairs of these. Yeah. Um, I don't need to hoard all of these." Um, for that, like, for that switch to go off in you to be like, "Yo, I want to do this," um, and obviously it's been hella contagious because, like, I don't know how many sneakers a kickback gets donated now, but everyone will give give shoes or everyone gives their shoes over, so. Yeah, man, it definitely paved the way for a lot of a lot of good things to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's the one component of being able to like hand off, but even in the sneaker, there's so much education to kind of unpack, similar to any medium, you know? Mm -hmm. But for me, sneakers was what I felt most well-versed in, and sneakers was the one thing that took me away from the traditional form of education growing up. Like, I wasn't at home reading novels, I was at home trying to understand and unpack design processes or trying to figure out what was coming out next. And I really feel like through the sneaker, we're on pace to kind of open the floor to like new forms of education, which we have, you know, some of the events that you've hosted, some of the events that we've done. It's been, it's been fun, man. And it just, it's a way of just letting kids know that you respect and love them off top, you know, so. Yeah, drawing like pictures of shoes back in the day, drawing like Nikes or Jordans, like to think of like what it has become now. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty nuts. Even, even like with the space that we're in now, you know, um, for, at first it was sitting in class drawing sneakers and I, and I wish the teacher would ask me like, why are you drawing sneakers? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, don't do that shit, you know? 
Um, focus, focus, focus on our schoolwork so that you could become A, B, or C. Focus Be on our history. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly yeah. that kind of stuff. For you, when did you realize that basketball was so much bigger than what we saw it as being <laughs> just a sport? I think um, I think it's been very gradual, um, just like realizing what basketball does um, and the like the role that it plays in in my life, but then starting to just realize it in like everyone's life like obviously you could go to like the uh the early stages of just like bonding with my dad over basketball and to this day like that's still like our main the main thing that we bond about um but then i just looked around at like my friend group and i was like oh i know you from basketball you from basketball and it's just like the connective tissue that <laughs> was was with like 95 percent of the people that i knew it was it was just basketball and i don't know it's like i mean you you understand it like when you see someone who's who was on your team when you were like grade four you're gonna have like a connection to them and you're gonna be like oh that's my dog that's my bro um because you've been through like some unspeakable type of i don't know some type of bond that yeah you just can't really explain it mm -hmm. but um i don't know what it is about about basketball but it's it uh yeah, it just it just brings people together in a way that is very unique. With, within what you're saying, it's kind of kind of like basketball kept us safe. You know, basketball was like this non tangible community center of sorts. You know, mm -hmm. where we'd kind of come together, congregate. Like we created our own spaces with the sport, and that's kind of like the early stages of it. But like when you think about when we went to. Cuba and the first day we went to play basketball and that's mm -hmm. how we kind of felt more safe to kind of Hell explore yeah. the city or yep. you know going to Africa and meeting kids and using that as a way to talk to them when we don't speak the same language uh, it's we, a global language when, when we went when we went to India and we we're playing basketball <laughs> in the court dodging tennis balls while they played cricket like yeah. it's we've been in so many different situations with with the ball that has allowed us to kind of break through surface level interactions, as well as keep ourselves safe, present us opportunities, you know, kind of piggyback, piggybacking on what you, you said, well, what is, what does basketball mean to you now? Um, yeah, man, I think, <laughs> I think, um, to me, it's like, it's like the, it's the initial stages of like dreaming for me. Like it's like, that, those were like the first dreams I had of like dunking a basketball or shooting like a three pointer, a game winner. And like those still, those dreams still exist. Um, I still want to be in the NBA so bad. No, uh, no, those dreams still exist because even though it's not like actually like, yo, I, I don't really, I would love to 360 dunk, but I, that's not the dream now, but it's like, the dreams are still related to basketball in which like I still want to create within that space and I still want to share that what it's done for me with other people and I think I think with you it's like <laughs> you can speak to it but I see a lot of the, the similarities in um in how you approach like dreaming and 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 you know it's like it's essentially like you know Messiah always <laughs> says it but it's like a tool yeah. It's like a tool to for like so many things, whether it's education, friendship, fucking fun, all 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 of those things. So, as much as it's been a dream, we've made so many, you know, humbly, we've made so many dreams come true. Like we, I I remember sitting in class and being told like, oh, you can't read a slam magazine because that's not a novel. Mm -hmm. But she didn't understand that. I'm sitting at my desk wondering who made this cover, you know, <laughs> who made this cover. And if I could make a cover, what would I do for it to happen? You know, like 10, 11 years later, when we get to shoot a cover, it, it was like something so big, but so it's like so small, but so big in the grand scheme of things, like just like actualizing, you know, ideas and thoughts from our childhood and kind of transitioning into we use the ball to get us to a certain point. And then you kind of enter this new room where it's like, okay, well, how do I bring the ball with me? And mm -hmm. that's how we connected with the camera, right? So it's it's always there. Basketball is like this identity piece, this this uh, 
Yeah, this tool, this like beautiful instrument. Mm -hmm. Facts. And it does that for so many people, you know. With the recent success and just the winning culture we've kind of established in the city, how have you seen that change the landscape of sport, community in the city? I would say that it's, um, yeah, it's about time. I don't know if you remember, but I definitely remember being a kid, uh, like waking up early before school and trying to watch highlights and I have to wait for like 25 minutes of, of boring ass hockey highlights that I just, you have to just thug it out till you get like a little glimpse of like three minutes of basketball. And now it's like totally changed. Obviously social media like adjusted things a bit, but basketball is like, it's, it's the sport now. It's the there's no denying. It's like the it's the number. Well, maybe like globally, soccer competes, but like at least in North America, basketball is like is everywhere, and it's um, yeah, and it's like what I always wanted as a kid. So I'm just I'm just happy that it's getting like the recognition it deserves, uh, finally. And uh, in terms of the city, I think it's it's basketball being such a big part of this city is so important because of what this city represents. And it's like the diversity, the diversity that you just don't get with hockey um, and even baseball to some degree. But um, yeah, it's such an inclusive sport and, and it really, really reflects Toronto. Like anyone, and it's, it's I looked at the Raptors at, or even basketball basketball and the Raptors as like, it's like the sport for immigrants. Like when the Raptors came along, it was like, yeah, maybe immigrants back then couldn't, a lot of immigrants, they couldn't necessarily resonate with, with hockey, but um, for the price point and also just like, it's a cold sport that you need ice for. But with basketball, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's um, it was much easier, it was just, with Raptors, with the with basketball and the Raptors, it was much easier for people like that to, you know, find like ownership and find like a sense of purpose with that game. Um, and then you can see it now how how like the city's just developed and how um, how in tune like everyone is with this game. What type of impact do you think seeing? I mean, even being there, what kind of impact do you think? the championship had on our city and how do you see that kind of becoming something in the future? Look how much we love basketball. Mm -hmm. And then look how like shit our team was, you know? Yeah. It didn't really matter that our team was that shit. It's just the idea of it. Yeah. So the fact that it had like this much of an impact on like no disrespect obviously because they were still a good team. Um, there were some good years sprinkled in there, but for the most part, like the Raptors were bad for a long, long time, but that didn't stop us from being like obsessed. Yeah. And now that they're actually good and like consistently good, it's yeah. like, I don't, I don't even know what, what's gonna happen, but yeah. it's like, there's like the Carter effect, which, you know, we stem from, but there's like a whole another effect that we're not gonna see until like, I don't know, like 15, 10, 15, maybe 20 years down the line, but yeah, it's it's gonna be nuts. I would have killed for playoff runs mm -hmm. as a kid. We didn't have no playoff run. Like none. we didn't see none of that, you know. So we were begging for all star game, and that happened. We were begging for like just a playoff win, that happened. Yeah. Finals, the like, championship seemed like it would like that seemed like those were dreams that like realistically I couldn't even like think of. With all this basketball that we've played, what do you think are like some of the skills that directly translate to? you know, what we do now, or just life in general, life skills and work. What do you think? I'm thinking about how it's hurt us, probably wearing, <laughs> wearing multiple hats, you know, growing up here in Toronto playing basketball, I went to a school where it was almost like positionless, you know, mm -hmm. because I, I wanted to play guard, but I was one of the taller people, so I had to play. So. I almost feel like intrinsically, as you're asking me that question, I'm wondering if like some of the work I'm doing today, I'm just playing a position because I had to, mm -hmm. you know? But I think um, <laughs> when you talk about it as 
for the game itself, communication is obvious. Being able to read the room is obvious. Anticipating is obvious. And just a sense of family is obvious. And after we're done playing the game, we seek that. You know, mm-hmm. I, and obviously we still play today when we can, but we want we we want that same team where we're able to compete with one another as a team for something much larger than ourselves. We're doing that in in today's world, you know, with Tier Zero, mm-hmm. with all the projects that we do, with the stories that we tell. We want to make winning plays, you know. Yeah, it's it exists in everything we do today. It exists in how we Im- approach interactions, you know. We, when we use basketball to kind of make friends and develop relationships around the world, and we use the basketball as a tool, like that's our initial point of reference as to how we now use the camera, or mm-hmm. as to how we now approach a, a project. We, we know how, I want to say crucial, but we know how imperative it is for us to be able to like find common ground with someone that we don't know. And that's kind of how we approach all our projects, you know. Yeah, you gotta work together. Yeah, work together. See what we like, and like, let's start there. Let's unpack there. How how do me and you relate? Because chances are, we're, you know, we're kids of immigrants. Like, we're, we're, we're in Toronto, the city where everyone's from everywhere, mm-hmm. and you know, in some way, shape, or form, you can connect with somebody and. It's just intrinsic, you know, the, everything we learn playing the game is so tied to how we approach all interactions today. So wait, so are you saying that when you were playing ball, they, you were like a jack of all trades? You were like a Swiss Army knife? You could do it all? <laughs> is that I'm, just what saying, saying? I'm just saying I was playing power forward when I wanted to play point guard. Oh, you know, okay. So. They forced, they put you in a box. That's what they did. Pretty much. That's I, another bad I thing. Wish, I wish, I make the joke all the time, but like, you know, I wish I saw Ben Simmons <laughs> play <laughs> when I was younger. Don't and say I Ben Simmons. I, oh, don't man, say I, Ben I, Simmons. I, might, I, don't got, I don't got the best shot, man, so it could have worked in my favor. Don't man. say Ben. Say like, you could be like Scotty Barnes or something, or like yeah, Pascal. Yeah, 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 Scotty like, Barnes. Pa- shout out Pascal. You could be like Pascal. 100%, 100%. Yeah, if they believed it. But that, that's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, th- we just we just didn't have we didn't have that when we were younger, and, mm-hmm. and now there was Lamar Odom, obviously, and like there's Char Lewis and stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, today it's much more apparent. But that's 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 cool though. The idea that that um just like having to just figure things out. Like when you're on the court, a lot of a lot of it is just like you can't go anywhere past those lines. So you have to just figure out how to how to like get what you need, get what you need in terms of scoring, in terms of like facilitating, in terms of like just being there for someone else and figuring out how to like, how this person's skill set, and that's what you're really good at, is like figuring out how this person's skill set can mesh with this person's skill set and how both of those skill sets together can like turn into like a bucket and a bucket is like the next job or like a fire project. Or, or or anything like that, so. 100%, and the way you play, you have an easy layup, but you give it to somebody else. Exactly, so. Yep. Yep. We, we do that today, too, there's, there's clear parallels. Yeah, bro, it's, it's actually crazy. <laughs> cool. It's actually crazy how they, uh, how they relate, so. It's pretty cool. When talking about kickback, I was, one day when we were in Senegal, I went up to Masai, I'm like, yo, Masai, when did you start this? You know, when did you start Joy? It was 15 years, right? I'm like, when did you feel like you knew what you wanted to do? And he's like, I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago. And I was like, and it's so funny that I, I vividly remember myself saying this to him. I'm like, what if I told you I know what I'm doing right now? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm I, don't, I don't know. I'm I, 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 had no, I had no clue. Yeah. And he's like, what are you trying to do? And I tried to explain it to him. And when I think back, it's so funny. But like, um, when I think about... Did so, you know? Did you know... You didn't know then, like, do you, did you think you knew what you wanted to do? No, I just, I just believed in, I just believed in like kickback. You like believed what we it, were doing. but you didn't know like exactly what it was. But I was trying to show up, be confident. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that just shows that the fucking mastermind that he is is like being able to understand that. Yo, I started this shit this amount of years ago, but I don't. Yeah, it takes a while to to really f- formulate it. Yeah, and I think, man, I'm not. I don't know how deep I go with this, but. In our culture, like if you aren't if you aren't successful 
if you don't have something to show off by a certain age as a black man, you feel like you failed, you know? And I really respect and appreciate the process that people like him, Barack, and so many other people went through where they were figuring it out well into their 30s, you know, and, and staying humble and staying focused and, and really putting down blocks to build something. And they're still on an upwards trajectory, you know what I mean? So for me, that really changed the way I saw myself as a black man in the sense that, oh, I haven't failed. Mm -hmm. And oh, it's okay to not know what I'm doing at a certain age. And yes, I still have time. And yes, I can build something much larger than myself. And sometimes it's like the slow build that promotes the strongest sense of longevity. So that's kind of what I learned in just hearing some, he's dropped gems on us all the time, you know? like. Yeah. When, I, when I, I'm like, yo, you're busy, how do you get better every day? And he just drops those gems and you just take it. And like, I've, I remember the day I asked him that question and I've done it ever since. And it's like, you know, so I, I really appreciate and I respect that, that play because I feel like we put ourselves in harm's way when we try to make a certain amount of money or show people a certain version of ourselves before we actually figured out who we are as people, as humans. Yeah, Masai is like, he's still fairly young, but when you like relate it to us, like what, when Masai was doing what, when Masai was our age, he was like still in the trenches, like, you know, um, being a scout, um, doing all these things where it's like, he wasn't a household name uh, and he didn't really become a household name until like five, 10 years ago, um, but you know, the trajectory that he's on and the, the empire that he's left is, is um, yeah, it's, it's ever growing and it's, yeah, it's insane. There's, there's, there's like almost nobody in his age range that has had the impact on basketball that he has. Nah. Like with, with ball, like the African League, the, sh the stuff that we get to go and witness and play a part in in GOA, like it's a long game, man. And I, I, I bought into that just being around him. Yeah, he's the GOAT. Yeah, Masai, he, he's like the blueprint. Just how to maneuver in this space as a, yeah, as a black man. Yeah, he, he said never forget where you came from. Mm -hmm. And I had to think about that. I'm like, wow. Even the way he started GOA, he, he just go back with like a bag of sneakers every year. <laughs> yeah, just, on a humble just, tip. Just became its own thing. But just the idea of never forgetting where you came from, it's like, whether it be kickback or 2-0, we know that we grew up in the hoods downtown, mm -hmm. you know? And we have as many of those kids in our studio as possible. We try to get them as many jobs and as much exposure to real things as possible. And we let them know that we understand what they're going through and that although we don't have the answers, we can create the space, Yeah, you know? So never forgetting where you came from, whether it be two streets down or a continent away, that's something that he's dropped like 10 lines that like are just like commandments in my head at this point so yeah that's one of them aside from like what he says though it's also like his actions too like he's just like he's mad resilient like the fact that he said like he would bring a championship to the city at a time when it seemed like it wasn't possible and then to actually do it it's really like working towards something progressively versus like hit or miss, you know? Like fight or flight. You, you kind of calculate mm -hmm. and take the steps necessary to go towards something and knowing that if you're the best at what you do, you'll get there. How has basketball expanded your sense of community? The community is expanded because of like whatever that love is for that game, for the game, but it's, it's similar to like what I was mentioning before, like, just the idea that, you know, you can, you may never, you may not have seen like so-and-so for X amount of years, but because you, you know, played in a pickup game at the YMCA with them, uh, that's your dog now for life. And you have like this type of bond and you, you, you have this, this, this sense of like, oh, I really know this guy, even though really all we did was play a couple of runs. 
But um, yeah, it's just there's something about it that just it opens you up to to like you know honesty and to um, to like real human hu- a human side of of life that um, that that's what all co- that's what that's what community is essentially about and. And the more you play and the more of those relationships that you build, the more the more that community grows to the point where it's like, yeah, you I don't know I don't know exactly if I'm saying it right, but the that basketball the the basketball seed that is sprinkled everywhere is like it's just connective tissue throughout and then ultimately it leads to just like growth in anything, like, you know? Bringing, pulling people into like what you're doing and, and getting advice and, and, and just building something that you don't necessarily know at the time, but. I think about, when I think about how basketball has expanded my sense of community, it's just the environments in which we've been in as a result of the sport, you know? Whether it's realizing that basketball players have a personality because mm-hmm. we're, we're cooking up a, a a show for Surge, mm-hmm. and, and you realize that Jonas Valanciunas is terrified of snakes. Yeah. And he, like, yeah. like, what's wrong with this guy? But, or, or me, I remember where basketball has come in super handy for me. It was when me and Du one time, when we, were in, when we were in Morocco just walking, there was a kid who thought I played basketball. And I was having the city that we were in hate, like, it felt like they hated tourists. But this guy, came and talked to me because he felt like Abdullah. Mm-hmm. He, f- he felt like no one else around him played basketball, but he thought that I played basketball. So he came up and asked me, and I was like, yeah, let's go. And then you see like how much access he has to understanding the game, footwork, all this stuff. And then it's just like, yo, I'm only here for three more days, but well, let's hang out every day. And by the end of that trip, we're, we're in his family's home and his mom makes us a dinner I, I honestly can't forget. Wow. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and, and then and then when our friends go, like Abdul, when Abdul goes to Morocco, it's just like, yo, I'm going to set you up with Abdullah. Like, you're going to have the best meal yeah. on your trip there. And he's just like, yo, that was my favorite day on this. Like, I, he's like, he literally said, like, outside of Hajj, like, that was his favorite day of that trip when, when he was traveling that side of the world. So It's wild to think that it stems from, ba- like... Basketball causing an interaction to then causing like a bond, to then causing like a meal where you know we're breaking bread, you know, sharing food together, to the point where now when anyone goes there, I can say, yo, I, I got you, yep. you know? So I feel like there's like these, these, these red dots pinned on the map that basketball has kind of created this, you the know, this ecosystem, po- this, ecosystem like- this pocket, this network that I can confidently say I have friends here, I have friends there, I have friends here. Even even just it also just challenges the way you look at things like and I didn't know like you know people in Japan are actually nice hoopers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh it's it's so cool and it just makes you think and it it really just challenges you to rethink preconceived notions and of yourself of others and what a place has to offer because going back to Morocco until I met Abdullah, like that was my least favorite city <laughs> in Morocco because they're like, yo, put that camera away. We don't, we don't we mess don't with you. Pictures, da, da, da. Yeah. But by the end, like I felt at home. So it, it stems so many, so many things stem from, yeah. from that sport. But yeah, what it can evolve into is something much larger than basketball. So and I love, I love the fact that like, yo, every time we travel, like yeah. the first place, the first thing that catches our eyes, like, a basketball court yeah then you go to that basketball court and then you just meet people and then yeah you're right you just get integrated into culture and to community based off of this yeah this thing remember you know? remember when we were in india and we were dying of laughter because for some reason all of those kids like stephen curry yeah <laughs> <Stephen> <laughs> right, curry. it was so funny and it's like yo you don't just have to say that yeah this is the funny that was yeah. one of the fun we didn't speak the same language but it was just but like, they knew how to say steph curry yeah exactly. and it's like yo i like steph curry too and now we're just like we're chilling all day together so yeah it's funny a lot of people might think it's like yo we are these ogs and we are mentoring these kids but I know that, especially in talking to you so much, 
the the truth is like it's it's more of like it's less of like yo I'm teaching you something and it's more of like a collaboration like what do you think what do you think um, you learn from from being around these kids and what do you think they teach you yeah I have a short answer that can be up for interpretation but like when I look at a 10 year old and I think about where he or she will be when they're 15 like I know it's gonna be leaps and bounds right sometimes well I've had moments where at 23 or at 24 or at 25 being so afraid of what my life would look like when I'm 28 or 29 because I feel like it's only downhill from here <laughs> for some reason. And that it kind of ties back to like, if you're not successful by a certain point, then you kind of kind of drop the ball. Yeah, you gotta be like a 16 right? year old rock star. So basically, <laughs> but for me, knowing that a kid could go from 10 to 15 and grow so much, why can't I do the same at 23? Why can't I do the same at 28, right? And at that point, I just start to look at how they carry themselves and how they approach life and the situations that they put themselves in or are put in that are conducive to that type of growth. You know, it might not be so physical, but you can grow mentally, emotionally, socially. So for me, spending time around kids really just took me out of thinking too far ahead. You know, now I have a dream, but I take my dream day by day, and at the end of my day, I say, am I a step closer to my dream? Yes, no, yes, okay, good. Go to sleep, relax, you know, enjoy the day. Be as present as you possibly can be. You know, kids are way more intelligent than we are. You know, we're all adults saying that, oh, I wish, I, I hope I can get to a place where, like, you know, I can just enjoy life. And then you got a kid right beside you enjoying life. And mm -hmm. for some reason, you're the only one who can teach them something. So <laughs> facts. Uh, for it's me, facts. just being in spaces where we're surrounded by hundreds of them and you are kind of what you surround yourself by, some of it has been active learning, but a lot of it has been kind of passive. Yeah, it's true. Like, it's interesting because so many kids are, are shy upon, like, first meeting them. Mm -hmm. But you, it does take, like, that that kind of like active approach of like listening and prompting them sometimes to hear like what they're actually saying. Um, what do you think for you, like what do you think it is about those type of interactions or how do you like approach just like getting to know a kid? Cause I think that's, that's like, that's like so much of like how you can learn from them. Like you have to know them first cause they're not, they're not gonna just drop yeah. gems on you for no reason. Yeah, and I think, I think that's the cool thing. It kind of comes back in in somewhat of a full circle because that's what the sneakers are for. They start the conversation. Mm -hmm. We have something in common. I know you mess with some N3s. I do too, mm -hmm. you know? Let's, let's have a conversation. Yeah, facts. I know, and then on a deeper level, although we're not gonna talk about it, I can look a kid in their eye and I can be like, yo, I know how much these will cost your mom, but we don't gotta talk about that. Like, you're good now. I'm happy that you're good. Let's talk about something else, you know? From an overarching standpoint, what are some themes that, you know, you, you intend to explore? Yeah, I think some of the themes specifically are like, <laughs> to be blunt, like basketball in Toronto specifically, and not just basketball, but, but, but the culture that, that, um, that basketball brings and, and the energy that it brings. Um, not just and also not just from like a current, but also telling like the stories of the past and trying to figure out the best way to intertwine like past and present and with our own spin. It would be great to get to the point where to get to the stage where it's like you no, know, like more people can know, and it's not just like a very niche like moment in time, but something that can be presented to to you know to the world. So I feel I feel like. Those are, that's like a space where I think we can really, I know we really want to dive more into it. A lot of ways to go about it, but that's like my take. But what, I don't know, what do you think? For me, it's different because we, we have different but similar experiences, so different nonetheless. But for me, 
what I really hope to start exploring is like who I am, what makes me me, you know. We both have parents that are from completely different opposite sides of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then for me, just growing up with one, there's a whole other half of me that I have yet to unpack. Mm -hmm. So I feel very privileged and energized to have the capacity and space to start to think about what's that other half of me that I haven't even unlocked yet in terms of understanding, in terms of mannerism, in terms of, you know, culture, ethnicity, heritage, you know, just, just, just everything related to my identity as mixed as it is and trying to find this, this space where I can exist because I think when I went to, when we went to the AGO, I think it was like two months ago, uh, and we were at the like Car Caribbean history exhibit, and then you kind of see this uh, picture where the, the slave owners, or, or the family that lived there, I don't want to call them slave owners, I don't, however they refer to, you have the, the white people who own the home, and you have the black people that live with them, not sitting at the home, but kind of sitting off to the side but you, you can see that, like, they all exist in this space. Mm -hmm. And I had this moment of thinking where I was, like, growing up, one of my biggest challenges was, like, knowing which side I was more accepted on, but always feeling like there was this little thing that made me different, you know? And then there's, like, this, there's, there's literally this space in between the picture that divides the white family from the black family, and I'm, I'm thinking about how can... I dive deeper into being myself and what makes me me by obviously I'm more accepted on one end of the spectrum than the other but if I could just carve out a space or own this space somewhere in between mm -hmm. to kind of you know bridge the gap in terms of understanding communication sympathy empathy respect that means a lot to me, and I wanna, I wanna see where that that prompt takes me. So that's something mm -hmm. that's super important to me. And we can make some uh, pushes towards, you know, equity, respect, and hell yeah, understanding. Mm -hmm.